All right, class, is a rare treat that uh, you're actually here while we're doing this together. But we're going to take a look at number one and just quickly find our solution here. Uh, the slope of that first one, right, 11, 6, that's kind of a crazy looking slope. You'll notice the graph paper is bigger than today, right? It's going 10 in each direction. Yesterday it was just going 5 in each direction. So uh, real quickly, what's the y-intercept of the first equation? Thank you. So we're going to go down. If you could be a little bit louder next time. We're starting at negative 3. And from there, I'm going to go, what's the pattern for my slope? I'm going to do what from that point? Go up 11 and then to the right side. Perfect. So from here, I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then I'm going to go to the right 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's one of, those are both points that are on that first, first equation. Um, and I, I don't have a ruler. You know, yesterday I was using these, uh, oh, yes, this was great. This was like the sponge that I took and cleaned the pencil off that desk. What's nice about this sponge is that it doesn't like slide around on the glass. So I just put the sponge down and now it's a ruler and I'm just going to try and please. That's terrible. Imagine it went right through the dots. Um, so, you know what? I don't have to imagine, right? Because they say if at first you don't succeed, give up. No, give up. Okay, there it is. It's better. Um, so next, by the way, uh, Nellie said, uh, should I take out points if they're just segments? So I better make sure I put arrows, meaning they're lines, because she'll get mad. Uh, the y-intercept of the up, the next one is positive 6. And from there, I'm going to go down one and over three one two and three uh whoops not you down one over one two three interesting you guys look at that it's not going to meet it perfectly is it down one over one two and three. Oh my gosh did i make a mistake yes, sir. oh it's positive one third up one over three. Oh my gosh and they'll meet perfectly then yes well, hey, the world isn't perfect, though, right? Do you know how I know that? Okay, good. So I'm going to go up one over one, two, three. And then up one over. Oh, right there. They are meeting. So let's graph that line. So, guys, it appears that the solution is when x is 6 and y is 8. So 6, 8 is my solution. And you know what? I'm not going to plug that in, uh, check it the way I showed you in class, but I am going to check it with my calculator. So I'm just going to go 11, 6. So I go 11 divided by 6, and I'm going to multiply that times x. So times, uh, oh, not times 8, times 6. Oh, I know what that is. What's 11, 6 times 6? What? What's 11, 6 times 6? What? No. Oh, sorry. 11. You guys are doing that on your cat. Oh, yeah, 11, 6 times 6 is just 11. Jeez. Right. So now I'm going to subtract from that 11, 6 times 6 minus the number 3. And guess what? It gives me 8. So that works in the first equation. Now I'm going to go 1 third, 1 divided by 3 times 6. So 1 third of 6 should be 2. And it is. And I'm just going to add 6 to that. And it gives me exactly uh, eight. It gives me y. Yeah, that's there too. All right, so then let's go ahead and do the one problem on the next page. So we'll flip and look at um, solve this system by substitution. Um, again, these are really nice right now because it's really clear which variable we should be getting alone. I'm going to get y alone in the first equation. This becomes, I'm going to subtract 9x nine, nine from both sides of the second equation. So this becomes y equals negative 9x minus 1. There's what y is. That is going to be the value I'm going to substitute into the first equation for y. So now let's go ahead and rewrite this, this first equation down here. The first equation is negative 2 times x minus 8 times y. Playing the part of y is negative 9x minus 1. And that will equal the number 8. So you can see I've got just one equation. They're all x's. I use the distributive property. Um, watch me. I made fun of you with arithmetic. 9 times 8 is 56. 
Is that right? No, it's 63. Oh, my gosh. Nine times eight is 63. So I've got... Oh, my gosh. Nine times eight is 72. Hey, thank... That's that's arithmetic. That's a whole different thing. Uh, nine times eight is positive seventy-two x's, and then that's going to be a plus eight. And over here, that equals eight. That's weird, isn't it weird? Because guess what? If I combine my x's, I get seventy times x equals. If I subtract eight from both sides, what do I get? Zero. Hey, what's x equal? Yes, if I divide both sides by 70, right, divide both sides by 70, and it doesn't take a genius to see this, 0 divided by 70 is 0. So x is 0, and if x is 0, what's y? Yeah, you can plug it right in here, and you can see that y has to equal negative 1. So that's the solution using uh, the method of substitution. Probably it's a good thing to, to check that because I always make mistakes. Um, so I'm going to go negative 2 times x is oh, 0. <laughs> really? You just did that? Yeah. Minus 8 times, uh, we said y was negative 1. Eight, yeah, guess what? Negative 8 is equal to negative 8, so that's good. And then the other one is 9 times 0 is 0. <laughs> I don't even need to check that, right? It's done. All right, guys, good luck.